Bernie, I can start on a light note. Your broken heart, which you were rocking on the tailgate this morning, has actually gotten bigger. Well, I have my pink tie on from the Breast Cancer Awareness Month that we did um, last week, and I actually stole it from my our friend Terry from the UA. And not to be make light of today, but the heart has grown. And I think I'm gonna have to see T uh, Toby Cosgrove down at the Cleveland Clinic for heart surgery. Because to be up 20 to 10, like we were today, 20 to, actually 20 to seven, and a chance to go up 21 to seven, and then go into halftime like that. And Tone, me and you spoke at halftime, and neither one of us felt comfortable. For the game to end like it did, where Arizona basically dominated the game, and for us to show we're not even in their same league is so discouraging. It really is heartbreaking. They turned the ball over four times. They were giving us this game, certainly through the first half, and then, Bernie, they go on to rattle off 27 unanswered points, okay? Uh, they, it could have been much worse. It could have been worse in the first half if Palmer doesn't miss two deep guys. Floyd on one of them, Fitzgerald, wide open on the other one. Second half, he wasn't missing those guys, and they weren't turning the ball over as badly, although he did have that interception. The wind in Cleveland Stadium going to the dog pound is incredibly challenging. In the first half, Bob Golick was exactly right today. The winds did pick up to 25 miles an hour with the gusts. It made, we, we were very fortunate for the, from a Browns perspective that it made it tough to throw those 40, 50 yard throws. Carson Palmer, like he usually does not do, missed those throws and that kept us in the game, kept us with the league. But unfortunately in the second half, Carson had figured out the wins and made the throws and put us away. All right, before we even look at the highlights, because we could break this down, although at this time of night, you know, it's, you know, two Exhausting. and six. Where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? I mean, look at the play calls. Okay, Duke Johnson gets a pass. He, 44 yards after the catch. So it's a 52-yard play with Duke Johnson, your guy from the U. The next time they throw him the ball, he goes for 16 yards. And what do they do? They never throw him the ball again. What are they doing? Well, first, from an offensive coordinator perspective, and this is not to protect or hang out because uh, Coach Filippo. Me and you have talked, and we've talked with the, the viewers and listeners out there throughout the year, that it's imperative that physically you man up and you're able to compete on a physical level against your other team. And that means playmakers, offensive line, defensive line. We are void of playmakers. But and he is one, Bernie. He's a playmaker at Duke. And you know far more than I do, but leave him on the field because maybe the defense is wondering if you're going to throw back to him well, on another play. He probably should have been on more. I'm just saying when you have such limited choices and you take Arizona with so many choices today where they had so many guys that they could go to, two top-tier running backs, two real to three Top tier wide receivers, um, a solid offensive line, an amazing defense. We weren't even in the same league as them. So to focus on that, on, on, on the play calling or the personnel groups, I understand the point. It's just, it's hard to trick a team for four quarters and win a game. And unfortunately, it's imperative that we see now. That's where we're at as the Cleveland Browns again. And this is what we talked about on tailgate um, 19 this morning, mm -hmm. why I have the broken heart. This is 16 years of talking about the same thing where we are below par in terms of talent and playmakers and organizationally, structurally, than we are the other team. All right.